Hey guys, Christian here from Core Electronics. Today we're going to finish off Project Set 2 by undertaking Circuit 2C, which is a Simon Says game. In this circuit, we're going to expand on our last circuit, as well as some other, including some other components from Project Set 1. So the components that we're going to include in pro from Project Set 1 are LEDs, once again, and some 330 ohm resistors. So we can keep the circuit set up the same way as we did in the last video. We're just going to include the extra components. So one of the extra components is another push button, just to increase the, increase the difficulty of this Simon Says game. So we're going to plug that in the same way that we did the other push buttons. And we're going to connect it once again the same way that we did with the others. So that is one of the pins going to ground and the other pin going to pin 8. So the LEDs in this one will actually change the way that these are connected. So we'll connect the LEDs and then we'll make sure that all the connections are good. So for this section, um, to emit the use of some wires, we're going to be using these 330 ohm resistors to go straight to the ground connection from the negative terminal, terminal of the LED. So it is a little tough to see given the amount of wires, but essentially what we're doing is we're putting the positive terminal for instance, the positive terminal of this one is going into 19H and the negative terminal is going into 20H. From there, I'm connecting 20 on the outermost pin to ground through that resistor. And I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm putting the positive polarity um, resistor uh, positive polarity of the LED on the uppermost side and the negative on a lower side. And that way that I know that I'm, I'm consistent with my connections. So an important thing to not do here is to not connect the um, LED to any of the pins from the, um, from the push buttons because they are inputs and an LED is an output component. So with that said, um, that is the negative connections of the LEDs connected. So we'll go across and we will rewire the positive connections. So the positive terminal from the red LED, I've put in um, the row 25. So row 25 following our book, We'll go to pin three. So the push button pin for the red one stays the same. The positive red connection goes to pin three. Then yellow push button pin goes to pin four. And then the yellow LED pin goes to pin five. So it is essentially push button LED, push button LED. Green connection goes to six. And green LED connection goes to seven. The blue push button connection we put in um, eight. And the blue LED will go in nine. So from this, we will have a straight connection uh, or a straight setup of all the pins from pin 2 to pin 10 with the first one being the red push button and the last one being the signal pin for the buzzer. So now that that's all done, we're going to connect the circuit. And then we're going to open up guide for Simon Says. So the last program is currently running on there and that's having the input pull up on pin three, which is making this LED look high. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload this code so that it stops that. It'll upload it, it'll reset the board, and then it will run the new code. 
and you'll see all the lights go on. So if we want to see that again, we can hit reset. All the lights will go on and it'll refresh. Um, it'll also place a tone and it will give us a lead for which way we want to go. So all the lights light up, it'll give us the first one, we press that one, it'll give us a pattern and it'll want us to output that pattern continually. So if we're going to look at the code here, we're going to see in button. So they've saved all the button pins in an array. And the reason that they've done this is so that they can scroll through it later. Similarly, all the LEDs are saved in an array and all the tones that can be played for each of the buttons and LEDs is also saved in an array. So to win, we apparently have to get 10 in a row um, or 10 selections in a row. So it'll go 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll have to get up to 10 if we want to make the difficulty easier. We can say well, we only need to go up to five. Well, we'll leave it at 10. Um, and once it reaches 10, it will start to play a song for us, a victory song. So the button sequence, oh, apparently has to go up to 16. So that is the amount that we'll have to remember to get there. Um, so buzzer pin once again is on 10. We didn't change that. Um, we have a variable to indicate if a button's been pressed. So we'll probably have zero, one, two, three, and four means no button is pressed. Um, and this round counter identifies what round we're on. So we have um, time functions. So we have a start time and we have a time limit. So 2000 is in milliseconds, so it's two seconds. So it's going to say that we have two seconds to get to the next pin, otherwise we, we fail, we end our game. And we're going to be using Boolean values. So Boolean values are named after, I believe, George Bull. Um, and he started Boolean algebra. And that is where your OR statements and AND statements come from. Um, they're very useful in programming. And he's got some or some states called true and false, which are Boolean values. So false means not true and true means true. So um, in the setup, we're going to use once again the input pull-ups and the input pull-ups are going to tell us that these push buttons are of an input pull-up variety. Um, so that means that we can safely press them without um, the redboard shorting out from power to ground. So next we have the LEDs. Um, we have them set as outputs and once again you can see that they've declared the button pins by um, referencing them in the array. So arrays in Arduino start at zero. So this here is position zero, this here is position one, two and three. And this is helpful for when we're writing for loops because we want to start at zero and we want to go until we get a certain amount. So that's a nice side note. Um, so we're starting at zero, one, two, three, and they are all outputs here. So pins three, five, seven, and nine are all outputs. And the buzzer pin, once again, is an output. So um, if the game started is false, we want to run the start sequence. So it's saying that if our game has not commenced, we want to run start sequence. Now start, start sequence will be a void function down here somewhere. Start sequence. And that start sequence will um, initial, initialize the game. So from there we have round counter. So our counter here that tells us what round we're on will be reset back to zero. And game started will now equal true, so that once we go through this loop, it will not run this again. It won't start the game partway through, we've already got a started game. So in each round, um, we're gonna flash out the, the new sequence, and this sequence is generated in um, our start sequence. So it's gonna flash out the sequence so we know what we're doing. So an example of that is 
Oh, that's just told me I'm wrong from the previous game. It'll most likely restart. So I have to press green, green, green. And that is our next, that is how we can see the button sequence. So the button sequence is randomly generated um, using this random seed function. And they've made it extra random or tried to make it extra random because nothing um, computer generated is truly random, um, but it's random enough for the purposes of this game. They're doing that by reading the values of the floating A0 pin. So from there, it is going to run the, run the game. Um, it's gonna delay and then it's gonna go to the next one and then it's gonna go to the next one um, until we have reached the end of the round counter. Um, then it's going to wait for our, wait for us to actually read it in. So it's going to start through the process to see if we, the user, are pressing um, the correct button at the correct time. So to do this, they use a function called millis, and millis or millis um, determines the amount of time that's run since the Arduino has, or since the Redboard has been um, initialized. So Millis is really good for timekeeping purposes. And as you'll see in our project set four, when we do our display, we'll actually display this on the LCD screen. So it's gonna start this um, timer essentially. And then we're going to check this until, um, until the end of the sequence or until the player messes up. So we're checking in the button button check will read in essentially this value that we had up here, this pressed button. It'll save a value there from the button check state where it's comparing the digital read values of each of the buttons in the array. Um, and then it will return the, um, the value here. So if it's this button, it's gonna return zero, this button, it's gonna return one, two and three, and if nothing's returned as stated before, it'll return four. So it's going to then compare these, um, it's gonna compare this button, uh, uh, it's gonna first check that it's not four, and then it's going to compare this button to um, the button in the sequence that we need to press. If that's correct, it'll keep going, um, it'll break out of this, um, if statement here and it'll do it again. Um, then if wrong, it's gonna run the lose sequence where it'll play a losing tone, for instance, that tone there, um, then it will break from the sequence. Um, otherwise, it's gonna turn all the LEDs off again. So to make sure that the buttons are pressed in the appropriate time, as I didn't do there, um, it's going to compare millis, which is the time running at that present stage, to start time, which it was registered up here at the start of the function. And then it's going to compare that to the time limit. So if it's less than two seconds, because time limit was set to two seconds, or 2000 milliseconds, if that's done there, um, it will also lose the sequence. Oh, if it's greater than, it will also lose the sequence. Otherwise, it won't read this section in. Once we get to the end, it'll um, increase the round counter by one. Um, once we correctly input all of these um, button sequences. And then if the round counter is greater than the rounds to win, we will win. It will run the win sequence and it will play a winning tone for us. And then it'll delay again and then run from the start. Oh, actually nothing sets game started back to false, which means that if we want to play again, we're going to have to press this reset button. So in here, they've got a numerous set of functions, flash LED, which is this initialized start, um, all LED off, which essentially just turns all the LED off, um, button check, which we discussed earlier, it reads the state of which button was pressed, um, start sequence starts the game um, by randomly selecting a 
um, value that's going to keep going up for this random sequence. Um, it's going to populate the button sequence array, essentially, um, with random numbers from 0 to 3, which are one, uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, and then if this is done correctly, then it will um, it will flash all of these on as it did at the start and it will get us ready to play the game. So it's going to flash, repeat and play tones, which are the initialization tones. Um, it'll repeat four times as we could see with the four flashes and the four -na 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 -na, um, noises at the start. Then this is our win sequence. So if we end up winning, um, which I could probably show you here by decreasing the rounds to win to two. Hopefully I don't ruin this and mess this up. Um, then it will play a winning sequence. And if we are wrong, ta-da, I have won the game. Um, if I hadn't done that, it plays uh, the losing sequence by flashing the pins and um, turning on the buzzer to make um, these noises, which are sad noises. Um, then it will reset game starter back to false. Oh, there we go. It does reset the game starter back to false so that we can play again when we want to. So, that is Circuit 2C. Uh, it's a lot to take in, but essentially we now understand at the end of Project Set 2 uh, what an array is, how to access individual parts of an array, what a for loop is, and how to use it to ac ac access parts of an array, um, what pull-up resistors are, and how to use them, and how to connect a push button, and how to ultimately use a buzzer, which will become much, much more uh, focused on in future topics because they are good for um, warning systems or detection systems, which we'll be using in the very next project set. So with that said, uh, congratulations on finishing project set two, and I'll see you in the next project set on motion.